Welcome to the top eight and grand finale and the top deck list of this tournament by liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching as much of this video as you can possible. It allows us to keep on uploading these, so thank you very much for doing all of that. Let's go. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Now, what do we have here in the top eight? This is not a Dragon Link deck. This is an actual Chaos deck that thrives off going second. That's right. You win the coin flip, you choose to go second. That's different than just having a good second. You prefer to go second, and you'll find out why. Let's go. Friend did regained. We do have double bestial. Let's see if we can do anything with that. We're going to Gold Sark, Banishing the Dark, Trigger to grab the Hawk, Hawk Reborn the Dark to now make the Colossus. Colossus states that you cannot add cards from the deck to the hand, and it's indestructible as long as we have a Thunder in the Graveyard to banish. We have one Thunder to banish, just one. We're going to tribute the Ball Drake for Lubelian from the hand. That is a rare sight. Setting up the regained Core of Chaos, banishing a Dark from the graveyard, triggering the regain to return the banished card back into the deck to draw one. Now the non-turn player regained is going to counter that play. You do not get to draw, they get to draw. Chaos Hunter is also being chain summoned, which will prevent you from being able to banish, but they still can. We're also chain summoning from the deck with emergency teleport. Chain link six is going to negate. Chain link seven is going to get a Druosaur onto the field. Are you done with the chains? Holy moly. Core of Chaos when it leaves the field is banished, but because of the Chaos Hunter, it's now going to go to the graveyard instead. You have an eight and a level two. And that's a level 10 synchro. We also have the Chaos Mirage Dragon now under max C. Huh? Chaos Mirage could steal your opponent's banished card? I I knew that. Holy moly, what the? We're going to be using the Baldrake in the Core of Chaos, so we really needed that to make a Chaos Archfiend. We could not summon our own Baldrake because of the Chaos Hunter. Now, it's crazy about the Chaos Archfiend is it becomes 4,500 attack. Buh. Boost, and it can attack every card on the field. That's a lot of damage. Attack number one, we can now banish. Attack number two, 4,000 damage. Attack number three, we keep on attacking. Attack number four, protected from destruction. All of those attacks dropping Kid Art down to 2,100 life. This is why you want to go second with the deck. This solely is the reason. Now with the eight and a four, I guess we couldn't do anything, huh? We couldn't like Baldrake and then Baldrake and Mirage make a uh, the thing, the Chaos Angel. There's no light and darks in the opposing graveyard. There's a light in our graveyard. So I do think we uh, we are under Max C to be fair. You're right. So Max C, we don't want to play further into the Max C. Thunder into Thunder, banishing the Thunder and the Chaos Ruler to summon a Thunder Dragon Titan. Now the regain is going to return the Colossus back in the extra deck, but we're going to return it instead. So we are the ones that get to draw, not you. You did it to me. I now do it to you. Now it's very important when they activate the Thunder Dragon from the hand, if they have a Thunder Dragon in the deck to search for, which they don't, you have to chain link block the Thunder Dragon Titan with a card like your Bestial. Just chain anything to their hand effect so they do not get to pop cards in the field. We're going to be tribute setting for our uh, Magna Hut being sent from the deck to the graveyard. Banishing for the Ball Drake. Regained is going to be triggered to Reborn the Serenir. This is some interesting plays we have going on here. 3200, big enough to wipe out the Lubelian. Chaos Archfiend just sitting there at 4500 attack. We're going to be tributing our set Thunder Dragon for our Colossus. Now, you cannot add cards from the deck to the hand. You have a dead Gamma, not so good. We're going to tribute for the Lubelian, and with Lubelian, we can set up a Branded Beast to pop a card on the field. The Thunder Dragon Titan can't be destroyed by card effect, and the Thunder Dragon Colossus can't be destroyed at all. Pop in the Regained, so now only we will be the ones to draw with our Regained. Return it back. We draw it into Harpy Feather Duster. I, we still have attack everything like this thing's nuts. I mean, do we win? <laughs> what the what is going on? Did we forget? Not only the turn it's sun, but the next turn it was just sitting there ready to attack everything 4500 banishing anything it destroys by battle absolute insanity 
going second as we prefer. We did win game one, so it wasn't our choice. And how do we get anything out alongside the Chaos Synchron? Holy moly, we're dead. We're dead. We weren't dead. We had a good hand if it weren't for the Colossus stopping us from even activating the Chaos Space, also filling the Grave of the Chaos. <laughs> Ending the turn. We do have a Gamma. So maybe Lubellion could activate? Yes, of course he would. Thank you. Fell for it. Ash can negate. Ash can negate Gamma. Really? Okay. Holding on to the Ash. We're triggering Chaos Hunter here, though. Chaos Hunter, come forth. You now cannot banish. And the Druid Swarm is banishing the Dark, which will activate to search for a Thunder Dragon card. We have Thunder Dragon Fusion. Returning three to summon the Thunder Dragon Titan. Thunder Dragon add a Thunder Dragon Titan, pop a card in the field. Thunder Dragon add a Thunder Dragon, pop a second card in the field. Lethal damage, Thunder Dragon for the win. Earl has changed his mind. We're not letting Colossus be summoned turn one. We saw what happened by going second against Colossus for game two. It's not happening again. So if your deck is so good going second, that would tell me your deck does not have a good turn one play. Is that the case? We just got done. Uh, yeah, that was not a good turn one play. We did have a Lubellion set up a Branded Beast, which also was not going to be that good. But damn, that was really bad. Uh oh, can Kid Art lethal this field? Regained has been set up. That's the Chaos Angel play unaffected from monster effects and cannot be destroyed by battle. Also banishing the ball drake off the field. We're going to be regained, returning the banished card back to the bottom of the deck to draw one. Earl, you made it all the way to the top eight, my friend. You did very well. I am very much going to still be copying your deck and going second all night with it. Now, we are going to be using the effect of the Chaos Creator, even using the opponent's banished cards to return back in the deck to then summon our Thunder Dragon Dark back onto the field. The Chaos Angel is here, as we said, banishing the Ball Drake off the field. Now with that, we have 5,800 damage. We are chaining the Magna Hut. Get banishing. Banish from the graveyard, come forth and summon, activate to search for a dragon during the end phase. Regained is going to be triggered here to re-summon our Bestial from the Grave that we had just used to summon our Chaos Angel. Lots of damage on the field, 8,300, but there is one body blocking that lethal damage. We have Cross Sheep, which is going to combo up with the Thunder Dragon Colossus. We are going to Fusion Summon, trigger the Sheep, summon from the Graveyard, and just like that, Earl GB has to surrender. It was an unfortunate duel. I do think Earl GB potentially won game two if it weren't for the Floodgate, the Colossus, not allowing him to get a light or dark in the graveyard plus search. And rear for the Rise Heart. Maybe we actually wanted to negate because generally you do not want to negate the Fenrir search and the Fenrir. And the Rise Heart's going to lock us into Exceed only. We are only exceeding as we banish the Unicorn, which will be rebirthed onto the field. The Ash is no good now. We can't get Ashen unless we Ash negate Unicorn, but what are we negating? Negating Foxy Tune, which would summon from the deck, but we would not be able to perform a Synchro anyway. Was that a Jabate? Unicorn being triggered, looking at the extra deck because you Ash. Now I could banish your Romulus face down. You're not going to be searching for your Ravine. You're not going to be searching for the Tracer. We're going to mind hack your extra deck. <laughs> your Striker is gone. Your Romulus is gone. But if we look at the extra deck, we still have another striker. So striker's still in, unless we could banish it again through Unicorn's second time activating. Let's see if we could do that. Drew Swarm banishing the end phase while the Unicorn has already activated. It's a very interesting duel. We are going to draw phase the max C if they were to have ashed then we would have been able to banish the second and final copy of Striker Dragon. That single Druid Swarm was nuts. Dealing with both the Unicorn and the Mind Hacker at once. If we look at the banished cards here that have been randomly banished off the top of the deck, we lost a one of Rechargers and we lost our one of Regained. All banished face down. Birthing our Unicorn back onto the field. Big and why would you do that? I guess we really wanted to get rid of Striker Dragon. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. 
Hey, we killed ourselves for Striker. You can't summon Striker now. Double Striker and Romulus are gone. Holy moly. I'm, but, you know, we could have dealt with the Fenrir. And uh, they probably would have naturally activated your Unicorn anyway. Was it worth it? I'm just wondering. Was that worth it? Well, it looks like we're losing right now, so it definitely was not worth it. We went all out to banish their starters. And without their combo starters, we're just getting regular beat downed. Bestial beat down. Gamma no good here. Well, actually, it is very good. We have a level 8 synchro play potentially. But the Fenrir could banish on the resolution. Hmm. What do? What do? Goodbye to the driver. Boxy tune. I'm interested in what you're doing here. We got Deer No into. Huh? You couldn't, like, normal summon Ash? Ooh, this is really a punk deck. We got lots of punk. Wagon for the field spell. Field spell will be able to draw up to two cards per turn. Ogre Dance is going to be discard to grab our Deer Note. So we could banish from the graveyard to special summon our Deer Note. We get Max Seed, which Ash can negate. And then we have Triple Tactics Talent Mate. We can look at the hand, spin a card back. We could draw two. Maybe draw into some sort of a cash tier play, but we now have a body on the field. So it's going to be a lot more difficult to make that play. We, in fact, went for the draw two, and we ripped a card out of their hand anyway with that Ash. Gamma not activatable, completely dead here. Dragon Jam Drive is going to be activating to search our deck for a level three psychic, which could be a Ghost Ogre. We do not have our normal summon. Wagon's being reborn. We do have Ghost Ogre. Field Spell activating to draw one. Up to two cards this turn. Then Rear dead. Gamma dead. Now Psychic and Punisher. As long as your life points are lower than your opponent, it's unaffected from all activated card effects. So generally, the way to deal with this is you just swing into it. If you swing into it, your life points could be lower than your opponent. Then it becomes affected. Lubellion, we do have the Ogre, so Ogre is ready. Ogre could pop Ravine, Ogre could pop the Boot Sector launch. Ogre could pop a monster on the field if you want to just get it off the field. It does not negate, though. We're going to quickly launch onto the field our Tracer. And use Called By to even negate that Ghost Ogre. Very interesting here. Psych again, completely unaffected, but it could still be destroyed by battle. Can it be destroyed by battle? If at the start of the battle phase, you gain attack equal to the difference in life, though, that's potentially what we'll be doing. But when you do that Psychic and Punisher attack boost play, it makes you even more susceptible for your opponent to get their life points lower than yours by just swinging in. Because right now, Chaos Ruler into Psychic and Punisher, that's not going to make up the difference, just 500 damage. Abs Router searching for a Rocket Tracer with an available normal summon as the Chaos Space returns a banished card back into the deck to draw one. We are now Boot Sector launching our double rockets from the hand, Shokan into Mascarina. Now, Caliber into Pisty. Gia, can we create a badge for people in the chat, maybe? Who is Team Standard Mascarina Art and Team Alternative Art Mascarina? We gotta have a battle going on here. Which one is better? Triple Burst and the Pisty are pointing to the same spot, so Pisty could reborn a banished or engraved dragon. Now, we're gonna link this all up into Borolen Dragon. Borolen Dragon is here, so this is really interesting. We're swinging in on purpose, as I said, and our life points are now equal, which means now we could permanently negate the Psychic and Punisher. Negate! <laughs> Reborning our Recharger. It was unaffected. It's less than or equal. Equal is still unaffected. <laughs> We're still unaffected, mate. Let's go. It's not just less. It's equal also. We are going to jam drive, banish, special summon our dear note. Send Deer Note minusing 1,000 life so that we are further below the opponent's life points to remain being unaffected. Call by the Grave, banishing the Dragon Drive before it gets banished off the field. 
Now the GM session going to be drawing into our max C because anytime we pay life points on the field, we draw up to two cards that turn. From the graveyard, we are banishing very easily. We're gonna be able to swing in with a smaller monster to make up for that life point difference. Now we're under maxi, which does make us susceptible to a potential TTT play, which, you know, no cards in the hand. So actually there is no situation there. Chaos Angel on summon, not able to banish the psych again, Punisher, as it's completely unaffected. Goodbye to the jam extreme session field spell though. As Serenir sends from the deck to the grave a branded or bestial monster. We got the Lubalian in the grave here with no good way to summon it. We're going to be changing our life points. Finally, we are lower than the opponent, able to negate the Psychic and Punisher, reducing its attack and swinging into it as the Borland cannot be destroyed by battle. So we do have the ability to continually negate a monster effect once per turn, which cannot be chained to, cannot be targeted by monster effects, completely indestructible from battle and card effect. And the Chaos Angel was summoned with what? Should it say on the card what Chaos Angel is? Chaos Angel is completely unaffected from monster effects and cannot be destroyed by battle. None of these can be destroyed by battle. Stealing the Borland, but I still think Redden is in a good spot. The Chaos Angel, how do you deal with it? We're going to be summoning a Punk Seaman into the Foxy Toon. Foxy Toon's going to be tributing a monster on the field to come forth and summon. We're now going to make an Amazing Dragon. Amazing Dragon on summon. It does say if you click on it. Okay, I'll look into that. Madame's going to be searching for the Sunrise. Surprise, that is. So if I click on it, it says it. Not on this screen. Huh. Okay, I'll trust you. We'll check on it. We'll check on it. Van Rear attempting to banish the Chaos Angel unsuccessfully. All monsters could not be destroyed by battle, by the way. It does on mobile. Okay, I'll look out for it. I'll look out for it. Lambda making the Gamma activatable even if we have monsters on the field. Surprise is going to be able to pop a card on the field. As we now make a Borload Savage Dragon, the surprise is gonna be the main out for the Chaos Angel. I feel like, would the play be Gamma, Chain, Surprise, Pop the Chaos Angel? Chaos Angel gets popped, and then Gamma negates the Borload. Am I wrong or am I right? I think that would be the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was our main out to the Chaos Angel. So what do we do about Chaos Angel now? Boot Sector launch, launching our double rockets from the graveyard as the Chaos Angel starts to clean this up. No longer able to activate that Gamma from the hand here. <coughs> yeah, Lambda's on board if anyone thought that you couldn't Gamma. The Striker Dragon popping itself to grab the Recharger, triggering the Recharger to summon another monster from the graveyard with a different name. Come forth, Borland is back. That's right, if Borland's in the graveyard and you can make a Striker Dragon and you have a Recharger, it's reborn, it comes back. This is nuts. Romulus searching for the Dragon Ravine. Do we really discard an Effect Veiler here or we just hold on to it? We are going to Unicorn on Summon, spin back, discarding the Effect Veiler. To grab an Effect Veiler with the draw effect of the Unicorn, you gotta be kidding me. Discarding our second copy of Effect Veiler just to get safer into the graveyard from the deck to recycle our Lubellion. Lu, uh, what? How was that a good trade, mate? You had two chances to have Effect Veiler and you said, screw it. Lightning Storm. Okay, Chaos Angel is dealt with. Boar Load could not be destroyed. And Unicorn was not made with Mascarina. Wipe it. Negator on Monster, uh, I mean, wasting our negate. What if they had a play? I guess you know that this card, if you've been keeping track of it, has been there for a while, right? Battle we go, we got nothing. Back to Redden and Redden just like that with enough on the field for lethal damage with just the Borland. That is a 2-0 victory. Interesting, interesting. Foolish Burial Goods sending our Sacred Tree. Because Tier Lament got this card limited to one, K 
Can it become unlimited again? Is it too broken? Is it really that big of a deal? Camellia sending the tree again. Double tree, double activation, double search. Blessing can be used more than once per turn. And through all of that, we held on to our ash. We are going to negate the hugging. We attempted to eat that ash multiple times, but they just would not give it up. Tree into the double blessing. Now, let's synchro this up into Charge Warrior Draw. Back to you. And we do want to reborn the Camellia early. Chain banishing the Huggin. Chain Max C with no way to stop it. The Camellia could be sent. We're out of trees to send. So what do we send with Camellia? We don't send Sunflower, right? We're going to use the Cricket to summon Sunflower from the deck, potentially. Maybe we still send the Sunflower. We're sending another Cricket, so we're just thinning the deck out here. That did not give any additional play. Cricket is here. Cricket will then summon our Sunflower. And using the Camellia to not trigger the, not tribute the Cricket, I don't know if I agree with this, but I guess it could be okay. You can't double negate with Sunflower now, so that is a problem. They can just go to battle to take it out, but you do have a flash fire for at least one of them. Yeah, okay, I guess that worked out. We ate the battle phase anyway. If the Sunflower at least eats the battle phase, we're good. Chaos Angel. This is unaffected from monster effects. It's gonna banish on summon. Flash fire just destroys it. That's it. <laughs> like nothing. Not even a big deal. Cricket's going to be triggered, so the Baron to floor now cannot negate. We chain link blocked ourselves with the Cricket to reborn. So you do got to be careful that sometimes, not that he wanted to do that because it's unaffected. So come to me, drew a swarm during the end phase, and we can now make a Naturia Beast with infinite spell negate. Cricket is going to be using the effect of the Camellia to mill two instead of tributing to summon a Camellia from the deck, which will send a Cricket from the deck to the graveyard. You need the Ashizu Shufflers to shuffle your trees back in the deck. Naturia Beast is here with that infinite spell in the gate, triggering the Cricket to resummon itself back from the graveyard. Now making a Coral Dragon. Coral Dragon, if sent to the graveyard, will be drawing one. We're giving up our battle phase. We're going to make a Chang Ying. I think our battle phase was already given up from the previous turn. And now, if anything gets banished, we're going to banish a card in the field and in the grave. Maxi in the draw phase. Ain't no way. We're not going in with evenly matched yet. Triggering the Chang Ying, banishing the Wild Reverser and the Safer from the graveyard. We got him to negate. No way. We're actually going to evenly matched. That was a debate. To battle phase we go. Banishing everything but the Naturia Beast. Now, Naturia Beast can negate, but the Tracer can still chain pop the Quick Launch. Wow. Negating the Bistial. I mean, we see the hand, so it, it looks a lot worse than what they thought they did. Come forth, Recharger, Shokan into the Chaos Ruler. Top five cards of the deck. Add a light or dark among those five cards. We are under Max C. Cricket being triggered to come forth and summon. Are we out of Camellias from the deck, though? Cam three Camellias in the graveyard. That's a problem. We're out of juice. The Naturia engine is done. All trees, all Camellias, all gone. I think all three blessings also gone. Making our Lubelian. Lubelian setting up with regained Chaos Space, drawing a card here. Very well done with that evenly matched. We now have the Chaos Emperor being negated by the Naturia Beast. Milling the top two cards of the deck. We only have five cards left. So I know Naturia Beast is infinite negate, but it's actually only per two cards you have in your deck to mill. Four cards left. Can Yuri actually mill out a runic deck? That would be impossible, right? There's no way. We're going to return three, draw three. Regained, return one, draw one. Wow. When you think of Runic Founts and Verse Regained, kind of nuts. We are drawing Runic Tip into the destruction, randomly banishing off the top of the opponent's deck. 
We are going to destroy that regained. We of course have no battle phase here. Let's speed this up. We're going for the deck. We're just randomly banishing now. Slumber is going to banish three cards off the top of the deck. Two cards left. It's two versus two. <gasps> if he tricks him to activate Naturia Beast, he mills his final two. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. We have Boot Sector launch. If we have rockets in the graveyard, we could reborn them. Do we have rockets? We got two ro Holy moly. If he doesn't negate the Boot Sector, we're going to make big plays with it, aren't we? This is big. Oh, he has to negate, but he can't. He can't max C. He can't nature a beast. Let's go. That's it. We have to win this turn. <laughs> Can we deal lethal damage? 8,000 damage. This is, oh no. Flash, wait. You can't, you can't negate. You can't destroy. You cannot use these cards if they don't have enough in their deck. So dead, dead, dead. Let's go, full cook. Cricket's gonna summon just as another body to protect our life points. That's all it's doing here. Borlin could attack every single body on the field. So if we can have Borlin plus something else, maybe we could inflict lethal damage. We could possibly go into something like an Axis Code Talker. Doesn't Triple Burst have some battle phase effect? No! <laughs> no way! Are you kidding me? Zero cards in the deck? Was he actually gonna lethal? If this attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage. Huh? Once per turn during the damage step when a spell trap or monster effects activate, you can negate, okay. This inflicts piercing just one time, just 2,400. It, did you really connection fail or did you surrender? Game number two into max c ash negate let's speed this up that's going to be our one and only disruption attempt we got the tree in the graveyard the camellia sending it from the deck to the graveyard searching for our blessing blessing could bless the cricket from the graveyard back onto the field if we want but instead we're going to be making a charge warrior draw one with our huggin and camellia reborn the camellia to make our level 10 synchro chang ying not barren to floor if there's a card in the graveyard, the Chang Yin could banish it right now, which there is. Huh? Okay. Oops. Did we forget we had Maxi in the graveyard? That was a free banish. Then rear into Blessing. Reborn our Cricket. That is going to be allowing us to search for a Fen Rear. We're going to use the Cricket, which will trigger the Fen Rear to banish the Chang Yin off the field. And we actually can't stop it. That's it. Chang Yin is gone. Was this worth it? We gave up our Chang Ying. Camellia sending from the deck to the graveyard, and we just have nothing. What the? This is very interesting. Okay, Fenrir. Very powerful here. Now, Striker Dragon searching for the Boot Sector launch. I think this is a good negate, actually, because they can't normal summon their Tracer when they search for it with the Ravine. Negate! As I keep saying, check if they have a normal summon. If it's zero, then it potentially is a good negate. Ravine it up, sending from the hand, sending the Absa Router for the Rocket Tracer, which we cannot summon. Well, we have Recharger, actually. We already have Tracer in the graveyard. Oh, that's something. So that does change up this situation. Yeah, we should have saw this play happening. If there's already a tracer in the hand, in, in the graveyard, then uh, this changes things. Wait, he didn't add back recharge or summon the tracer. Okay, he's instead wanting to go for a chaos ruler play. Respectable, understandable. That will trigger the cricket. Cricket could summon from the deck nothing because it already activated its effect this turn. Top five, we got Lubellion in the graveyard in the chaos space. That is great. Holy moly. Lubellion searching for a bestial. We could tribute the chaos ruler. This is not looking good for Runic now. Is this a 2-0? Magna Hut searching for a dragon during the end phase. We're gonna chaos space, return back the striker dragon to draw one. We're gonna TTT draw two instead of looking at the hand. Should we have just gone for the final card in their hand? 
We have Heretic Seal, which could spin back the field spell, stopping it from drawing three, and the Huggin could not protect it. Also, it would be able to dodge a card like the Curses. Cricket is, it, it, this is so weird. Your opponent has to have the highest attack on the field, zero. And because of that, I get to summon two monsters. Makes sense. Camellia sending from the deck to the graveyard a tree, I guess, because you could have negative attack. Blessing come forth and reborn the sunflower for the double monster negate. Gary with no field spell on the graveyard to add back. The sunflower will very easily negate the seal now. Mill the top two instead of having a tribute. Negate! Now, does the Sunflower negate again? Because the seal's going to activate again to summon a monster from the deck, but it's not really going to turn into disruption. Ashing instead of Sunflower and keeping the Sunflower on the field for the double negate next turn. Okay, makes sense. Now, you could use Runic Tip, search for Slumber, and you could make the Sunflower indestructible by the next battle, or at least negate an attack, or Flash Fire, destroy the monster trying to attack into it. But all that is for naught as we make a Baron de Flor into TTT. Thanks to the Coral Dragon being sent to the graveyard for a Synchro. We are drawing. We're going to tip it up into the Curses. We got Curses and Destruction. We got the set up. Baron de Flor wiping out that field spell. Now making us susceptible to a potential impermanence. Then Rear is going to be a free special summon here. Banishing a light and dark to come forth and summon. Our Omni negate is ready. Get ready. We're going to use curses to negate the Fenrir early, not waiting for it to activate because we want to trigger the field spell to draw three. It works. The TTT is now active. Now the cricket has to be used in the main phase. Did we not have a Camellia? Camellia one in the graveyard, Camellia two in the graveyard, three Camellia in the graveyard, so we have nothing good to summon from the deck. N yeah, it, we're just kind of screwed here. If you don't have a Camellia in the deck, you're in big trouble. Slumber is going to protect us from destruction. Instead of negating the attack, essentially, we were going to be using it to protect us from destruction, so the attack goes through and they die. Successfully going to, I mean, the Fenrir is negated. Oh, it's been negated. Okay. What was the Fenrir negated from again? Oh, we curses. We curses preemptively. That was early in the turn. Smite the storm, banishing one card off the top of the deck, triggering the fountain to return three, draw three. And Baron de Floor is going to get popping. Now, Foolish Burial is going to be. Uh, we had a trees also. How quickly they go through all their trees. Wait. You have a third tree in your deck, and you sent the fountain to recycle a Gary instead? Okay, sure. We're going to be banishing cards off the top of the deck. 15 cards left. Let's recycle it up. Draw two, skip the battle phase. Back to you. Maxi preemptively in the draw phase with 15 cards left in our deck. We're just going to make no play whatsoever. Because it was in the draw phase, we cannot TTT. To battle we go, 3k to the face. This may be a while. Donner's going to force the negate. And with six cards in the deck, we could flash fire for two. Dispelling. Uh, we, we, can't, we can only flash fire for two, actually. We have to draw with our field spell. We, we could draw two here, even. We only have two cards. Uh-oh. One card with tip, two cards with flash fire, and three with the curses. That's exactly six cards, but the Ash can negate. If the Ash negates one, we actually do not mill out. Is he going to negate? Oh, did not negate. You won't, mate. You're now going to mill out. Negate the droplet, which we don't even need. So you essentially negated the tip anyway. You negated what it searched for. And now you have exactly five cards and I could banish exactly five. Where we otherwise could not have banished your entire deck. You would have had another turn. But, you know, we see the hand. He doesn't see the hand. <laughs> we see the hand. That is it. Game two, deck out victory.
Get ready for game three. We have no hand trap in sight. Let's do this. Striker into the boot sector. Negate a monster. Negate anything. We drew into Max C. I think we drew into Ash. Holy moly. Good luck. You know, we got TTT, which is a very good turn two card. I believe. Let's do it. What's crazy here is if you summon Cricket, you have turn player priority only with your toggle on to activate it and summon from the deck. But if you play with the toggle on auto, you normal summon Cricket, they activate their Borland. You can't chain Cricket. You lose your Cricket. It gets negated. And, you know, it's just stuck on the field. So let's see if we do that toggle on play. If that is even the optimal way. Playing around TTT. Regain being triggered. Okay. So the trigger effect actually does activate first. And he is activating before he gets negated by the Borland. Ash is going to negate. And now the TTT is active. Are you ready? Foolish Barrel Good sending the tree. Tree is going to be searching for... Blessing? Blessing summon Cricket is not going to, like, do anything. It already activated. It's hard once per turn. So we're in trouble. Smiting Storm summoning our Huggin. We don't have a Camellia to reborn. Discard the tree. The Blessing could summon a Camellia from the hand. So Borland negating the Huggin here is not that big of a deal because we're setting up a Blessing play with Camellia. Camellia and Huggin. Camellia could send another tree, searching for another blessing. We could level 10 Synchro here if it does not get disrupted. Camellia, send. You are going to Chain Banish. Now, the Druid Swarm, if the, the Tracer popping the Druid Swarm will get sending. Does he do that now or does he wait? Camellia also going to be triggered to summon the Cricket from the Graveyard because you summoned a Bestial. Regained also going to summon. We are, in fact, popping the Druid Swarm early. We're not waiting. So we are going to activate the Druid Swarm, send Camellia, or send the Hug in as we search for a Blessing to reborn the Camellia back onto the field. Is that going to even be able to allow us to make a play here, or what? We're making Donner Dagger for hire, which will force out a Negate, force out the Boar Load to Negate so that we could further our plays. We could special Camellia and steal the Bestial. Is that a play? I, I mean, like, what are we going to do here? This dude's drawing for Max C. Like, what kind of copium are we on right now? We just got to draw two. Ash into tip. Tip into field spell plus flash fire to get drawn. That is something. We will be able to draw three, actually. So maybe we're back in this duel. Very interesting. That was a very good TTT draw, too. Come to me, Destruction wiping out that regain. Goodbye to your Endless Advantage. Only 13 cards left in your deck. We're going to hold on to the Blessing to use it during your turn instead of further giving you even more cards to draw under the Max C. Now let's get to it. This is going to be interesting. Shokan into Baron to Floor. We have Negate a Monster and Negate Anything. That's going to trigger the Cricket to summon itself onto the field. Borland's going to Negate the Cricket. You can't chain to the Negate. That's it. Now the Blessing's gonna reborn our Camellia. Camellia on summon, sending a Sunflower. If you summon a monster, the Camellia will summon the Sunflower for a double monster negate. Flash Fire onto the Baron to Floor, forcing out the negate. If you don't negate, then we would have lost the top two cards of our deck and our Baron to Floor. Shokan into the Chaos Angel on summon, banish a card from the field, triggering the Camellia to reborn our Sunflower for double monster negate. Now, how do you deal with the double monster negate? You just attack into the Sunflower, and that's it. Not activating the Levineer, attacking absolutely everything with the Borland Dragon, with 13,000 damage on the field, freeing it up for over 9,000 damage left over. Lethal damage. Interesting duels. Very, very interesting. Fossil, dig it up into the racks. We have impermanence. We have to think about the best time to imperm, which we're going to do right now. The fur hire quick play spell is something I would worry about if I were, yeah, like the rookie for hire would dodge the impermanence. And they do play three of this, right? 
Oh, it's only a one of. You know what? It's actually, yeah, it's maybe worth the gamble. It's a worthwhile gamble. What's going to happen here is we have Rex reborn from the graveyard, pop a card in the field with the Dampa, which will trigger the fall go to draw three. Drawing three will probably draw into a runic card to then trigger the field spell to draw another three. We have Elf reborn the carrot, which will negate any spell or trap. We have Raphael negate a monster effect by discarding a fur hire. And we have Mascarina link up during the opponent's turn into, let's say, a unicorn maybe to spin a card in the field back into the deck. Good luck. Cross out, designate, negate. What's interesting here is if we had Ash to negate Max C, Raphael would have negated the Ash negating the Max C. So cross out was just perfect. A one of, which is available at three in TCG. Then rear, and we're chaining Mascarina up in here. Oh, we are linking with the Fen rear. It's not going to be triggering. It's not going to be banishing. And we have Carrot from the Grave. Do we still we still draw three? Holy moly. Trigger the Dampa, pop the Pixies. One, two, three different names. Draw three. Well. Well, well. Fur Hire, Runic, Sprite is insane. Drawing a Slumber off of the Raphael Resummon. <laughs> How do we compete with this? This is nuts. We were under Max C, but did we need Max C to win? I don't think so. No hand trap in sight. Let's do it. We're going to be linking off our monster and spell and trap card negate for the Mascarina instead. And what do we have here? We could reborn a spell and trap card or monster negate. We could turn this into an Omni Negate. We could Mask Arena into protecting our Omni Negate. So it's really not that crazy. Fountain, Chain the Elf. Let's get the carrot out up in here. Tip is going to be searching. Is it searching or special summoning? That is a search, not a special summon. Max C now. Okay. Wouldn't you want to max C once your carrots on the fields and you can negate a card like called by? Probably, right? Flash fire it up onto the carrot. We are going to negate the tip. I should say the flash fire that is. Got to update the dual log here. Now we draw in two. Draw two, field spell protected from the carrot, fossil dig into the Rex. Donpa is gonna be able to summon, then pop a card in the field. So before that happens, we want to trigger the caddy, add a penny, making an Apollo USA for triple monster negate. And then we can summon our Herald of Arc Light, which is going to be able to negate anything. Negate number one, chain penny, into Herald of Arclight, which the blue could just swing into. This is interesting. Maybe we make the Melfi. Melfi? No, we do not. 1,000 defense. Battle it up. We're going to still be trying to use up the negates of the Apollo USA. It negates. It does not destroy. Special summon, even under Max C. All three negates of Apollo USA are done. No more negates. Now we have to worry about the Herald of Arc Light, yes? Shokan into Mascarina. Thus going into Unicorn. Unicorn on summon, discard a card, forcing out the negate of the Herald of Arc Light. And we could have just gone to battle, right? Well, we can't be destroyed anyway, so it's fine. I guess that kind of works. Battle phase was skipped due to our runic cards being spun back, so we couldn't battle anyway. We're just kind of screwed up, aren't we? We really can't do anything. Because we didn't draw into any runic cards. And our battle phase was skipped, so we couldn't get the easy destruction of the Herald of Arc Light. Damn. Sometimes the battle phase matters. Battle phase being relevant in today's meta is relevant for Sunflower. 
Also relevant for the Herald of Arclay, as we saw. Relevant if you're using Fenrir yourself, if you want to trigger its effect without your opponent activating a monster effect. Let's see if we can break this field. We have a negate plus the Rex, which will be able to search. But it did not. On summon, it did not activate to search. We are scooping it up as the Smasher is going to smash the Rex off the field. Did not activate so that the red would not destroy it because we needed it to stay on the field, which generally is not a fear for having a level two on the field if you're a runic deck, because if they get rid of your level two, you then follow up with a runic card. Runic Sprite versus we got Pure Sprite. Pure Sprite with Melfi. Not ashing the gigantic Sprite, not ashing the blue. If you save the ash for the max C, maybe that's just better. But are you really saving it for max C if red can negate your ash? It's like, what are we doing at this point? <laughs> okay, I'll negate, why not? Got Caddy on the field, which will be able to turn into a negate anything. Masquerina will be linking up it probably into an Avermax or maybe an Apollo USA. Chain the Max C. Why are we chaining Max C to Runic Destruction? Golden Droplet, Special Summoning. It, why didn't we chain Special Summon? What were we afraid of that back row card being? That we wanted to wait for it to be destroyed before chaining the Golden Droplet under Max C to give them a draw. Kind of confused there. Discard on summon. Caddy's going to be triggered. We're going to negate the hug in. And now we're going to be grabbing a penny. All right. See, if the card was an impermanence, it still would not matter because it still gets destroyed on the resolution. So by the time this activates, it wouldn't do anything. So chaining to the max C was just ideal. I really can't think of why you would not want to do it. Smasher, PTSD, if it's a Smasher, the Smasher's gone before you could even activate it. Penny into the Herald of Arclight. Get ready, come forth. Into our Herald of Arc. Anything that is a monster sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard will be banished instead. We got Spooky Dogwood, which is a card that is activatable. <laughs> We're activating it right now. What? What is going on? Why are we getting spooky? Negate and destroy the blue. Huh? Don't you take damage if your opponent doesn't summon under spooky? You minus 4,000 for no reason. Are we just clicking yes? I'm so confused. Special the blue. Spooky is meta in time to minus 4k off yourself. Red is going to be negated just to burn three cards off the top of the deck, sure. Gigantic Sprite, come forth, Diva. Uh, we actually get tuning, huh? No. We're going to make Cat Shark, which will double the attack of Gigantic Sprite. Cat Shark, buh. Boost up the attack, 6,400. And just like that, finish him. Lethal damage with the red. There's a bug where the damage in the replay looks like effect damage and not battle. Hajime, top four. Now we are going Thunder Dragon. It's a Thunder Dragon. We have Veiler, but when do we Veiler? So this meets the requirement of the Colossus. We just need a Thunder Monster on the field to send to the graveyard as we do right there. Thunder on the field. We now have Colossus. So it's illegal to add cards from your deck to your hand. So Absa Router is dead. Can't use it. Striker Dragon can't add Boot Sector that we already have. We are going to end phase, flip up the Branded Beast to play our Regained, and we're just scooping it up. There's really not much we could do there. Well, you're not going to be able to Colossus on my first turn, but you will Max C me, but I will cross it out. No Max C in the draw phase. I always expect that if you don't Max C in the draw phase, you were probably AFK for a second. You just missed it by accident. Negate the Max C. Huh? Whoa. Bro. Chaining Max C, activating Max C in the response to a summon. And then, this is how you counter call by the grave. This is actually amazing. 
if he draw phased the max C, he would have been able to cross out or called by. So his plan was, if I wait to max C in response to a special summon, I could then chain summon Chaos Hunter to a called by or a cross out. Then on summon, your opponent cannot banish cards. Holy moly. All right. You did not forget to use it in the draw phase. You purposely waited. That was incredible. Completely ending his turn. Well done, Kid Art. I'm going to be writing that down. Protect your Maxi. Searching for Lubalian. Lubalian searching for a Bestial. Chaos Space in the graveyard will return a banished monster that cannot be normal summoned to then draw one. Goodbye to the opposing Lubalian being tributed for our Lubalian. And now we're going to be setting up for a branded spell or trapped into the back row. With the branded beast, we could quick effect tribute our monster to get poppin'. Why reverse is searching for a clap serpent that's illegal to summon. Druid Swarm is illegal to summon. Because of the Chaos Hunter, as long as it's face up, you cannot banish whatsoever. No banishing. We could still. <laughs> the dude got floodgated twice by two different cards. He got floodgated by Colossus Game 1. Then he got floodgated by the Chaos Hunter he's not allowed to banish. And I mean, everyone's banishing, right? So Chaos Hunter is just a good card to main deck. Anyone could play it. Anyone. Let's get to it. Quickly launching onto the field, not negating with the Ash. We have not used up our normal summon, so ashing this I think would be very bad. So when do we Ash? Do we save Ash for the Max C, or is there going to be an opportune moment to get Ashing? We got Boot Sector launched, launching our Tracer, still ready to normal summon for the safer. We could have Ash the Tracer, pop in the field spell, but we now save the Ash for the Chaos Ruler instead. I guess that worked out. Or we hold on to the Ash, because Ash can be used on Maxi in Perm Cans. Negate. Safer. This actually could be a good Ash. <laughs> yeah, that's a negate. So it worked out perfectly. Imperm, Ash, great negates. Good job, Shizor. Ending Yuri's turn. But now you're going to have to deal with Max C and Ash. This is what happens when you don't Max C in the draw phase. They whip out a surprise Fenrir that you now can't Max C. And if you max C, you trigger their Fenrir to banish a card you control. So it's just like a double whammy. Yep. All right. Goodbye to the safer. And let's get to it. <laughs> Before the Fenrir leaves the field, we're just going to get a quick, nice little banish. Sprint, send the angler, which the Ash can negate. Do we wait to negate the angler? Yes. So we saw in another duel negate the Sprint, but negating the angler here is also good. Negate! To battle we go. This is a really basic duel. Just basic plays. Caddy being summoned during the end phase, which will be triggered if we summon a monster. And by summoning a monster and triggering it, it's going to be making a Herald Arc Light. Probably banishing everything but the Caddy here. Goodbye to an Impermanence. Ending the turn. We're not going to be making any Ravine plays. Discard, send an Abso Router which uh, interesting that we did nothing here, really. Ravine, discard, send, search, could even discard for chaos space. We are really that afraid of the caddy, huh? Caddy and the Herald. We are gigantic spriting. Gigantic sprite with, is actually gigantic here. 3,200 gonna be summoning from the deck our blue. Blue into the jet, jet into... You're not playing the Babooster? No Babooster for game? Well, we have game anyway. Shokan into Cat Shark. Cat Shark, buh. Boost up the gigantic sprite that's over 8,000 damage. Very well done. No hand trap. All right, let's fully cook. So what did we accomplish here? Negate anything, negate a monster, plus maybe Unicorn during the opponent's turn. 
This is uh, also a bestial. Also, draw a card if they were to have a card get banished. We could be the one to do that. Let's do it. No alt art. Fenrir. Very good for breaking fields, or at least using up a negate. Triggering the regain to summon the Magna Hut, which will then trigger the Fenrir to banish. Orlin is going to be using up its once monster negate. Goodbye. We could still attempt to enter the battle phase to force out the Mascarina. But we're not. Uh, should we have tried to do that? We are going to be angling into the carrot. We're going to use Druid Swarm to special summon. If we use the Tracer to pop the Druid Swarm, it's going to send a special summon monster to the grave. I feel like this combo is happening so much. This is wild. Mascarina linkage time. We can link with the Druid Swarm instead. Using the opposing angler to make an underworld goddess. Huh. Interesting plays. Goddess will negate the ability to special summon a monster from the graveyard. Druid Swarm is going to send the carrot to the graveyard. And the goddess has nothing to negate. Follow up starter. Ash negates. I feel like we have everything. We got it all. What are you going to do? Even with the Fenrir to help uh, use up a negate? Still not enough. Let's game three it up. Let's do it. Sprite starter from the deck. Deep Sea Diva into Diva. What? Well, that's what Maxi do. You Maxi, we stop cooking. You Maxied me, I Maxi you. In the draw phase, you cannot use your triple tactics talent. That works out. If we use the red, if we could bait the red, then we could TTT. Well, we don't even need to because we're going to evenly match up the entire field. Set pass. I guess, uh, yeah, you know, hmm. We couldn't really trick them to use the red now, huh? Spooky is here. <laughs> How is Spooky going to play in the top four? We are going Angler and Beaver into the Sprint. Sprint's going to send from the deck to the graveyard, triggering the Angler to then summon two Nimbles onto the field. Double Nimble it up. Shokan into a giant, gigantic Sprite. 3,200 summoning a blue from the deck. Blue searching for another Sprite. Jet is coming, but what is it searching for? It's searching for another starter. And with that, we have our red being put into attack. We're getting ready for a big attack as the cat shark is going to boost up the gigantic sprite to make it 6,400 attack. We have over 9,000 damage. Now we got the pixies going in with the cat shark. You up, mate. The pixies would have been able to boost it up. And just like that, lethal damage, cat shark gigantic is back. I think at full power sprite at the beginning, this was a very good play, but then it kind of fell off. We're doing it again. Let's do it. The gigantic sprite turns off the Biss deals from being summoned. So if you don't chain your Biss deals on the activation of the gigantic, you can't save them for the battle phase. They're no longer hand traps. Gigantic sprite turns off Gores. Can you freaking believe that? As if Gores was not bad enough. Grand finale! We have Thunder Dragon versus Sprite with the post banless Merly Band, and guess what that resulted in? Zero tier limit in the top 16. They got clapped up. And boy, did we see crazy plays of Chaos Hunter. Hopefully we're going to see some more. Hajime! Let's do it, let's do it. Allure of Darkness into the max C so that they don't draw into a card like Call by the Grave or a Cross Out Designate or even an Ash. So that is why you want to do that. Even more ideal, you probably want to use this in the draw phase to play around Triple Tactics Talent and a Fenrir. Now we have the Dark being banished to grab a Hawk, using Thunder Dragon to grab a Thunder Dragon, discarding Thunder Dragon to grab another Thunder Dragon. And now with the Thunder Dragon Hawk, we're going to be able to special summon a monster, but first we're going to use the Thunder Dragon Fusion to return to the graveyard back in the deck to make a Colossus. Colossus will turn off the ability to search with blue and jet. You cannot search from your deck to your hand. It's also indestructible as long as you have a Thunder in the graveyard to banish, which we have none. We are under max C, so be careful. Thunder Dragon adding Thunder Dragon again. Oh my cheese, we're going to add two this time. End our turn. Now, Chaos Hunter's waiting for them to special summon. If they special summon, this will come out. It will trigger off their special summon, and then your opponent cannot banish cards whatsoever. Nibiru, but Gigantic Sprite turns off Nibiru, so we're going to count up the summons, which is illegal in TCG. 
Chaos Hunter is here. Discarding a card, special summoning. You now cannot banish. Summon number three. Uh-oh, we're going for Zeus. Zeus, the Colossus cannot be destroyed, but Zeus sends and doesn't destroy. This is summon number four. Wait. Do we Nibiru Zeus? <laughs> that, that's five summons. What are we doing? We don't, right? We wait. Okay. Uh, we're, we're gonna... Oh, uh, yeah. Wait for them to cook a bit. Wait. We could do it on the gigantic sprite. This is... Wait. We should wait. Shouldn't we wait? No, we're not waiting. All right. Tribute the entire field. Red. Red negates Nibiru, so waiting would actually be bad. Yeah, I agree with this. This is good. This is a good Nibiru. As soon as they would have been able to negate, and it would have been negated. All right, I'm all for it. Now, it's worth noting that Max C against Nibiru is not draw one, it's draw two. It is a pot of greed. Double called by back to you. Max C in that draw phase. We are going to chain... The Bistial, double Bistial chain, so that we're not going to be giving them free draws off of our Bistial summons. Now, if we can get Druid Swarm into the graveyard, it's going to send that giant token to the grave. How is are we going to do that? What's a good way to do that? We got the Thunder Dragon Fusion. Add a Battery Man Solar. Ooh, this is so good. Battery Man Solar, and the Druid Swarm is going to make the ultimate Chaos Angel. This Chaos Angel is going to be completely unaffected from monster effects, and none of your cards can be destroyed by battle, and it's going to banish a card on summon. Oh, we got outplayed. We are using the Chaos Angel to banish a back row instead of the token. Thus, the Druid Swarm is being countered by Call to the Grave. Now we have no way to deal with that token. Oh boy. I mean, not that I would have done it differently, but I guess if we really wanted to play around called by to really get rid of that token, again, our cards can't be destroyed by battle, so it's not that big of a deal, but maybe we just don't have an out to the token to win this turn now. Goodbye to the Thunder Dragon Hawk attempting to summon a banished or engraved Thunder Dragon. I can't believe we had 9,000 lethal damage. All we had to do was Chaos Angel the token for game. We just didn't expect the call by. Did not see it coming. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> How are we surviving another turn? I can't believe it. Beaver into the Angler. We don't have any disruption. So how do we out the Chaos Angel? Unaffected from monster effects. Tell me the play. What is the way? Well, we would have to Goddess. Do we have a Goddess in the extra deck here? We don't. So what do? We have a gigantic, gigantic Sprite ready to summon a level two from the deck. Smasher with the jet is a play. Baldrake is going to be banishing the elf on summon. Red is going to negate and destroy the Baldrake. So jet and Smashers, it's over, is it not? I think this is it. This may be it. Gigantic Sprite into the blue. We're going to try to use up all of our cards to bait and negate. They have nothing. Our final play is going to be Jet into Smashers, banishing the Chaos Angel through a non-monster effect, opening up for lethal damage. 9,800 called by the Grave, protecting him from lethal damage on the last turn. I cannot believe it. We would have won if we would have just banished the token. Wow. We, if the back row were anything else, we would all be going nuts on why is Druid Swarm and Chaos Angel both activating to deal with the same token when he could also get rid of a back row if there were no call by the grave. It wouldn't make sense to us, but that actually won him the game, the called by specifically protecting from the Druid Swarm. Unbelievable. We have no maxi against us, which is going to be good to set this up. The Gold Sark is limited to one, banishing the Dark to trigger to grab a Roar. Now Chaos Space discarding to grab a Lubellion. Lubellion discarding to grab a Bistial, but is going to get negated. Is this correct? I feel like negating Dark is a pretty good play to negate. Negating the Bellion, though. We are going to be summoning the Roar and then tributing the Roar for the Colossus, only if we activate a Thunder Monster effect in the hand. And then we're going to Thunder Dragon Fusion, returning back on the deck to make a Thunder Dragon Titan. Now, what did we accomplish here? 
This is something. This is a ruling you're going to want to know. The Thunder Dragon Dark will be discarded at any point of the turn to search for a Thunder Dragon Dark, but you then need to be the direct chain link, the Thunder Dragon Titan, to your own Thunder Dragon Dark to then pop a card in the field non-targeting. To stop that, you have to chain anything. Chain anything to the Dark and it will pop nothing. The Colossus is also preventing the opponent from searching any cards. Blue in Jet, no search for you. Also, we're indestructible. As long as we have a Thunder in the Graveyard, which we have none now, but the Dark could be sent to the Graveyard to protect the Colossus. The Titan could banish two to protect from card effects. We got spooky. <laughs> we're getting spooky up in here. Do you play a level 10 Synchro with your Cash Tira? Is that why we're doing this? Uh-oh, Centuria, Thunder Dragon Dark. This is it. You have to chain, but if you chain, this is gonna lock you out of summoning Zeus. If you chain Spooky, no way are we gonna use Spooky to chain link block the Titan. And it's actually gonna be a good play. No way, no way, no way, no way. That's the reason to use Spooky. You wanted to know why to play Spooky. That's why you get Spooky. Centuria swinging into the Colossus. It just like that, not locked into rank two. We can actually make our Zeus. Zeus is here. Wipe up the entire field. Destruction protection, not protected from being sent to the graveyard. And then gets nibiru -ed. Is that too early of a Nibiru? Okay, go wait, we gained, we're at 10,000 life from the spooky. Ain't no way. <laughs> we boosting up our life, let's go. If the opponent did not summon, Spooky would have halved our life points. That's interesting. Searching for a Thunder Dragon Hawk. We got Roar recycling a Thunder Dragon card. Come to me, Thunder Dragon Fusion. Get Thunder Dragon Fusion summoning. We may still have over 10,000 damage lethal. Thunder Dragon Dark will trigger the Titan. Why didn't we at least set the starter? It's kind of interesting. Titan, get popping, wiping up that token. We currently have 7,700 damage on the field. We are going to be making a three material. Chaos Angel is here. That is gonna be 9,700 damage, not quite lethal. We're actually not lethaling? You gotta be kidding me. What the, <laughs> yeah, the anti Nibiru deck is getting nibiru twice. 700 life with an active Thunder Dragon Dark to get popping of any card on the field. No Valor, no Ash. Very interesting. Holding it. Ash, negate. Ready with the Titan. Titan's gonna pop Gigantic Sprite. Definitely. Chaos Angel's unaffected from monster effects. Sprint. Okay, Valor on Sprint. That works out. That is great. If we chain Smash, this is actually a big play. Smasher is going to banish a Sprite card from the graveyard and banish our Link 2 on the field, dodging the Valor, banishing a card on the field, which could banish the Chaos Angel of the Titan, sending the Nimble Angler, summoning double Nimbles from the deck. This is it. This is the play. That is what I'm talking about. Goodbye, Smashers. Titan pop sprint. Then how does this resolve? You have to banish a link to and a card your opponent controls. If you can't resolve that, you do nothing. It does nothing. Ain't no way. The Titan just countered the play. Wipe up the sprint. Smashers resolves without effect. It could not banish anything. But it still dodges the Valor. Okay. We still got to play. We still got to play. We still got plays. Beaver into Beaver. We do get to keep the Titan. So all you did was protect from a Banish. Elf is going to reborn the Sprint from the Graveyard. We're going to show Khan into a gigantic, gigantic Sprite. 3,200 attack. Summon from the deck. Come forth, Blue. Blue, I choose you into the Red. Red will be a free special summon. And then we end our turn. That's it. We could just go to battle. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Battle phase, lethal damage. All right. <laughs> well, that happened. That happened. If he didn't ash the starter, he would have killed himself. That's right. Starter 
kills yourself. Starter can't summon anything from the deck without dying. <laughs> the sprite starter, what's the smallest monster you could summon? Starter states that whatever you summon, you take damage equal to its original attack. And you would uh, generally a card with a cost won't let you kill yourself, but it's not a cost. It's part of the effect to kill yourself. So summon jet, burn for 13, summon carrot, burn for 1,000, summon the red, burn for 12, summon blue, burn for 1,100. Could you imagine ashing the starter and then losing that game when it would have killed them? That would have been nuts. Holy moly. Game number three of the grand finale. Are you ready? Hajime. Wait, double spooky dogwood in your hand? Ain't no way this is in your hand twice. It is a normal summon alongside Fenrir to make a level 10 synchro. Do we play a level 10 synchro? No. <laughs> How did you get into the finals with this card? Well, you use it to chain link block Titan. Let's go. Fenrir into Fenrir. Normal summon the angler end. Bro, like this looks like a computer play. <laughs> it's just like, this looked like an NPC played out this turn. Okay. Dark add dark. Uh, spooky ensures you don't get lethal. It's like impossible. It's almost like a max C. Yeah, it, you can't lose. It, it almost guarantees another turn. Get spooky. Spooky in response to the bestial. They're gonna chain some another bestial. Wait, is that gonna mess up the first one? Is the first one being summoned still? Yeah, it's still being summoned, okay. Gain 20, 2,500. Every special summon we gain life. So double bestial on the field. Dark is activating, Roar is activating to summon a Thunder Dragon onto the field. We're gonna grab a Hawk, very well done. Come forth and summon. Battery Man Solar with the token. And now this is gonna be the big Chaos Angel. This Chaos Angel using a light and a dark is gonna be unaffected from monster effects and all your monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. The impermanence could just negate all of that. Gaining 3,500 life points, 15,000 life. I'm sorry for speaking poor, poorly on Spooky because I'm a Spooky believer now. I believe in the Spooky. We got Cross Sheep, another plus 700 life. They, they pretend like Spooky didn't happen. They just keep summoning under the Spooky and now we're at 18,000 life. Lubellion equipping onto the Branded Beast. <laughs> Hawk into the Roar. Over 21,000 life. Ain't no way this is happening. We're gonna summon a level four from the Graver with the effect of the Cross Sheep because we summoned a fusion to where it's pointing to or you could special summon another monster while it's pointing to a fusion. Now the Soldier of Chaos, because you used a level seven or higher, not only is this Royal, holy moly, this states that level seven or higher being used for a material ensures that this card could not be targeted, could not be destroyed by card effects. And if you destroy a monster by battle, it could gain 1500 attack, becoming 4500 untargetable, indestructible, or it could banish a card on the field, non-targeting damage step removal. 3000 life. We're not banishing, right? <laughs> 4500, of course. How do we stop untargetable, indestructible, 4,500 and it's royal? Let's go. Spooky for another turn. How did you get a royal Fenrir? That is like the most valuable card in the entire game right now. That's unbelievable. Come forth Fenrir triggering the regain. Wait, spooky on your turn? Shouldn't you spooky only on their turn? You got, you got spooky too early, mate. That's not a good spooky. I do not like that spooky. Then rear get banishing, and then the Veiler is going to negate. What the brick is going on? Can you Pixies into Sprint? Pixie Sprint's an angler? Is, was that not a play? Did we already try to do the thing? What the heck is going on? Farming life points. <laughs> Shizer, I'm sorry to tell you this, but Finals doesn't go into time. You can't win in time in the finals. 
We only have 9,600 life point attack here onto the 28,000 life. Let's go, focus, return back into the deck. Come forth and summon the dark. Dark for dark, triggering dark to grab the Thunder Dragon Fusion. 11,000 damage on the field. As we now show Khan returning three back in the deck to make a Thunder Dragon Titan. 14,000 damage. Now 16,000 damage. A little more than double half of their life points we just dealt. More than half their life points. Very good. All right, we actually have lethal next turn with 11,000 life. What are we ripping into here? What disruptions do we have? We can't add cards from the deck to the hand. We're going to get negated by Valor if we activate a monster effect. If we try to special summon from the deck, the Ash is going to negate. We can't trigger the Titan. This is untargetable, indestructible. If we summon a monster from the extra deck, the Ball Drake is going to banish it. And the Branded Beast could pop any card in the field. Let's go. Pixie and a carrot, Sprint. Get Sendin, Valor, Negate. Oh, we could Ball Drake and Chain the Valor. It will negate and it will be banished. Yes! Kid Art with the negate and banish on the Sprint. Completely winning the Meta Weekly. You are the Meta Weekly champion, my friend, and you did it with BLS. That was very well done. Beautiful. 11,000 life. Kid Art, come on, please go straight to the battle phase, mate. What the heck are you doing? Thunder Dragon Fusion on top of this. Wait, you have 15,000 life. Double Titan to battle we go. Attack, attack, attack. Lethal damage. Thank you, Kid Art, and thank you, Shizor. Both of you top tier. All right. Just like that, three games in a row with no time in between. Very nice. Our second tournament post ban list with Merly being banned by Kunami officially not a custom ban list and Dragon Link is your best deck. Oh my Jesus, ain't no way Dragon Link is the best. Chaos Ruler's got to go. Now let's quickly go over the deck list. Let's do it, boom. Heretic, Heretic with Sword Soul. I think that among any of these deck lists, if you're a new player returning, if the red UR craft requirement is a low number and also the UR CP total is kind of low among all the deck lists you see here, then it's going to be a good deck for you to build as a brand new player because it's going to be most accessible to go into. 14 card UR, you know, wow, uh, Dragon Link's actually not even that expensive. So maybe it's Destiny, looking pretty good. As we scroll on down there, very nice. Let's keep on going. And then we have JC6492 with a large and in charge 45 card deck Dragon Link. Here is the extra. We're only gonna really commentate, commentate on anything that's not standard. I've absolutely lost my voice, by the way. <coughs> Okami with the Synchron deck. This is my jam. This is what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit so you can see the full deck list here. This is my jam, this is it. We have Chaos Angel and Synchron. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. And then we have April with Branded. Branded is a pretty expensive deck here. Victanium with the Medulce Vernisolif. Clean 40, just like that. Just what I wanna see. And then we have Boda with uh, what the heck is this? 21 UR craft required? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. What the heck? This is a huge deck limited to one grass. Do you ever draw it? Here is the extra deck. Very well done. Let's keep on going. Triple D Jungle Man will soon have the Quadra D. Good job, good, good job. Only 500 URCP, 11 craft required, okay. Earl GB with, this was the deck of the day. This is a turn two deck. This is beautiful. Go second on the ladder, nice. And then we have this top tier deck for hire, Sprite Runic, clean 40. 
Let's keep on going. Then we have Dissorrow with the Naturia Runic. This is a fun deck I enjoy playing. I like decks that have a lot of actions and play a lot on the opponent's turn, which is... Yeah, I kind of like degenerate decks besides Floodgates. I don't like Floodgates, but I do like playing on your turn. We have Rain with the Punk Cash Tira. This is a beautiful deck. I do want to play this deck also. Got the Shang replays and a ton of Punk in the main. Looking good. Keep on going. We have Red in with the Dragon Link. Looking kind of standard here. I don't see anything too crazy. All right. Bird Brain confirmed. Yuri Evna. 46 card Dragon Link. They're all looking quite similar here. There's a little, you know, some cards here and there. Not everyone's playing like the Noctovision. And then here is the extra deck. And then second place, Spooky Sprite. <laughs> how? I have to interview Shizer and ask, how did this get you to the finals? Can you tell me that this actually got you to the finals and how and why? Nuts. Okay. This is the, the most expensive deck of the entire tournament. Hands down. Wow. Even more expensive than the 60 card decks, it looks like. And then your winner, Kid Arts. Very well done. Making plays with the Soldier of Chaos. Chaos Angel putting in good work. And Chaos Hunter. So good job, Kid Art, to that. Very well done. And that is the tournament. Continue to like, subscribe, comment, and watch the video as long as you can. Even if you just keep it on in the background, listen to the audio. You doing that is why we could keep on uploading these videos. Thank you so much. We're out.